Okay, good morning, everyone. So today I will talk about how do we model minor user collision in transaction fee mechanism. And as what Matt just, just mentioned, so to capture minor deviation is not easy work. So today we'll have some like intellectual exercises that how do we model if there are some miners they want to collude with users? How do we model them and whether the current model is proper? And this is a joint work with Tim and Elaine. Uh, so we, first of all, uh, what is uh, transaction fee mechanism. So uh, in, in today's talk, the most important idea is because of the block size is limited. So the, the purpose of the transaction fee mechanism is to allocate the on-chain resource efficiently. So in this uh, today's talk, you can think fee mechanism acts in auctions. But here, the item we want to sell are identical. They are the block space. So miners are the maintainer of the system so you can think of miner is the auctioneer of the auctions. And users, they have transaction. They want their transaction to be in the blockchains. So they want to buy the item, which is the block space. So users are the buyers in the auctions. So transaction fee mechanism will decide which user are conferring, how much do each user pay, and how much sh uh, should the miner get. OK, and let's see what's the issue of the current mechanism. So, so far, Bitcoin used the uh, so-called pay your bid auctions. So everyone just specify the price they are, you are willing to pay. The miner just uh, pick up the highest K bids in the market. K is the block size. Everyone pay their own bid, and all the payment go to the miner. So what's the issue of Bitcoin's auction? Uh, so if your true value for, for the transaction, let's say, is $5, are you going to bid $5? Not necessary. You will try to monitor the network and see, OK, if most of people just bid $2, I just need to bid 2.01. I try to build a bare minimum that can, I can get into the block. So this is bad for the users because the, the, it costs the user a lot of overhead. I need to monitor the network and try to dis, uh, decide my own bid. And can we solve this issue? Yes. So as Bot, uh, Matt just points out, we can just run a second press auction. And from the classical auction theory, uh, we know that the user just revealed their true value and is guaranteed to be op optimal. But what is the issue when we write a second price auction is that the miner can easily manipulate the price. Because in the second price auctions, every, uh, the cleaning price is the lowest bid in the block. So in this case, uh, everyone just paid the three, which is the lowest bid in the block. But miner can just inject a fake bid from, let's say, five. In this case, everyone needs to pay $2 more. Or the miner can also collude with the user with the lowest bid and say, could it bid five instead? And we can split the profit off table. So from this example, we can see that if you run a second price on the uh, blockchain, miner itself, or the minor user coalition, they can steal the profit from other users. So from the discussion above, we can conclude three desired property we want. First is UIC, then that means we want the, there is a simple strategy for the user. The user just want to be truthfully. The second one is called MIC, and that means the miner has no incentive to deviate. And third one, we call it C side contract proofness. That that means the join utility. If the miner clue with some users, your join utility should not be increased if they deviate from the protocol. So the uh, core question we want to answer today is, can we have a dream mechanism that satisfies all three properties? And let's quickly see what is the, stand, uh, the state of the art. So actually, Ethereum already does a good job. If you assume the block size is infinite, or in, uh, in Matt's talk, is unli unlimited supply, then EIP-1559 will just work as a posted price auction. There's a fixed price R. If, if your bid is higher than R, you paid it. And, but the key point here is miner gets nothing. All the payment must be burned. And this will be crucial as we see it later. Um, but the problem of EIP-1559 is if the network is congested, then that means the demand is higher than the supply. 
then it will reduce to the pay euro bid auction like the Bitcoin, as we see, it is not UIC. So again, can we have a dream mechanism that achieve all the properties? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Uh, so we show that if the block size is finite, or that is the limited supply, then no mechanism can satisfy both properties. No non-trivial uh, mean, <laughs> here means the only mechanism that satisfies both property is you always reject everyone, but that makes the blockchain useless. So maybe the idea of side contract proofiness is too stringent. So let's take a closer look at the de definition. So we require the joint utility of a coalition should not increase. How come the joint utility can increase? So if we run a second price auction, the coalition can try to inflate the selling price. So that means you, you can try to have some extra gain from other users. But maybe there, there are some scenario that no one is harmed. So in this case, we can also say that this extra gain, that is from the protocol. Let me give you an example. So when we talk about EIP 1559 on Ethereum, we say that all the payments are burned is crucial. Why is it crucial? Let's think about it. If the payment is not burned, let's say all the payment goes to the miner, what will happen? So consider an example. Let's say the posted price is five, and we have a user with the value three. How can they profit from it? So if everyone just behaves honestly, user just bid three, then because it is lower than the posted price, so no one is confirmed, no one get anything. However, user can tell the miner that if you, uh, if, if you're happy to pay me some cash back, I can overbid, I can bid five. And this, uh, this is actually good for both of them. And because we're in the uncongested case, so the network, uh, the supply is more than the demand. So if the miner includes one more user, it doesn't harm other users. So in this case, no one is harmed. And we said, okay, it's still from the protocol. So in general, in the ideal case, user just wants to reveal their true value, and the miner should implement the mechanism honestly. However, if there is a loophole in the mechanism that gives give you a chance to steal from the protocol, then the miner will want to just post the off-chain agreement that solicits all users to join. This, uh, uh, this off-chain agreement says that, hey, let's discuss what is the best way to steal from the protocol. And they try to submit the strategic bids to the mechanism. So recall that what is the purpose of transaction fee mechanism? The purpose is to allocate the blockchain resources efficiently. But in this case, if there is a loophole in the mechanism that allows you to steal from the protocol, then it turns out it is the off-chain agreement that actually allocates the blockchain resources. So this mechanism is born to be useless, and that's really bad. So the off-chain agreement that involves everyone, the miners and all users, is the most powerful coalition that you can steal from the protocol. So if you can uh, rule out the possibility that a global coalition can gain, then we also rule out the possibility that you, you can steal from the protocol. So formally, we call it global SCP. Global SCP says the joint utility of the global coalition, global coalition means the miner include with all users. They should not uh, profit if they deviate from the protocol. So now our question becomes, can we have a dream mechanism that satisfies UIC, users should not deviate? Yeah. They should have a simple bidding strategy. The second one is MIC, the miner doesn't want to deviate. And the third one, global SCP. Can we have a dream mechanism to achieve all of them? Unfortunately, it's impossible again. So we show that no mechanism can satisfy all three property at the same time. Okay, so maybe global SCP is still too stringent. And how could we have a Re more relaxed notion of minor user coalition. So recall that I claim Bitcoin's pay your bid auction is bad 
because users need to monitor other users' bid. So it, it costs the user a lot of overhead. So the key point here is the pay your bid auction. There is no simple bidding strategy for the user. So in the ideal case, users should just submit their uh, value directly so it is easy for them. But as long as there is some simple bidding strategy, that won't be too bad. So by simple, I mean if there is a dominant strategy for the user, which is independent of others' bid, then the user can just follow this bidding strategy sigma. All the user need to do is just to put the value into this function, and this function will tell you what you should bid. By applying this sig sigma, you don't, need to order, you, you don't need to monitor the network. It is independent of others' bids. So it is simple for the user. So if it allowed, allowed this situation, if the global coalition is, is happy about if everyone just applying sigma, then maybe we, we are still fine. So formally, this idea is called OCA proofness, and this is proposed by uh, Ralph Garden in 2021. So this definition uh, relaxes the global SCP in the sense that if, as long as there is an independent bidding strategy for the user, because it's independent, it's easy for the user, the global coalition cannot increase their joint utility if all the user already bids according to Sigma. So now our question is, can we have a dream mechanism that satisfies UIC, MIC, and OCA proofness? And unfortunately, we have the impossibility again and again. So we show that, OK, no mechanism can satisfy all three properties. So, so in the following, let me use two minutes to, to give you intuition what is, uh, how we prove the impossibility. So first, because OCA proof considered the global coalition. So the global coalition, if you don't want a global coalition to benefit from the deviation, then the winner must be the user with highest value. Otherwise, if the winners are not the highest people, then they can swap the bid to make the uh, highest people to win. OK. Because we, we require the winner must be the highest value, in this case, if the block, block size is three, then the winner must be the top three guy. Then UIC, which require an individual user to behave honestly, UIC will imply that the payment of this winner must be high enough. And actually, how high it should be? It should be at least the bar, the threshold, you can be the top three. So in this case, how could you become top three? You need to win the fourth guy. So UIC tells you their payment should be at least seven. So from OCA proof, we know that the winner must be the top guy. From UIC, we know that the payment should also be high enough. The high payment should be the bar that you can just become the top guy. Then that means the miner can try to inflate the selling price. So in this example, the miner can just inject the fake base, pretends that, oh, if you want to be the top three, you need to be at least 7.5. And in this case, miner gains more, so it's not MIC. So it sounds pessimistic. It sounds even we consider different kinds of minor user coalition, we bump into impossibilities again and again. And what's the hope here? So uh, in my previous work, we consider a different model is that if the mechanism is run by multiple miner instead of just a single miner, this multiple miner can jointly run a cryptographic primitive called multi-party computation, then in that case, we can have a meaningful uh, fee mechanism. And this will be the core topic in the next, next week, uh, in the next talk. So finally, let me conclude uh, on my talk. So the first takeaway is it's really difficult to achieve like both, uh, 
good user experience in the sense that there is a simple strategy for the user and also uh, def defend against minor user coalition. And the second takeaway is cryptographic can help, as we will see in the next talk. And here's my talk. You can find our paper online. And thank you so much. Hey, um, so I couldn't fully tell by the last slide. Are you saying that multi-party computation will get around the impossibility results, or the impossibility results still hold with some form of cryptography? Or is that going to be covered in the next talk? Uh, it's like a yes and no. So uh, by the yes side is, uh, uh, I, I, as uh, later on, talk, uh, Ko will talk about more details there. But on the yes side is, we, we can have uh, under MPC, then you can have a mechanism that achieves UIC, MIC, and one SCP. This is the yes side. But uh, on the no side is you cannot defend against like a size two coalition. That if you consider like a two SCP, then it's still impossible. Got it. Thank you. I want to follow up a bit related to Matt's talk earlier, too. Like, you're thinking about specific ways to generalize the nature of collusion that you want to protect against. Yes. Um, is there further work to be done? Maybe this goes with what Matt, Matt was proposing, to think deeply about what kind of collusion is enforceable, mm. and how does the information we store on-chain or off-chain matter for what collusion is enforceable, right? Like the more observable actions of the colluding parties are, the easier it is to enforce collusion because the easier it is to exclude you from future co Like, Is there work to be done thinking about what collusive activities for this type of bidding is enforceable to guide the direction of what kinds of collusion resistance do we need when doing transaction fee mechanism design? Uh, so, so uh, uh, are, you, are you asking like, what kinds of coalition is like a stable? Yeah. If they, uh, what kinds of information if they gain, they, in this case, they want to form a coalition. If we can try to hide some information there, maybe the coalition becomes unstable. They, won't, they want to form it. Yeah, so, so just within this talk, the, the ideas we consider, we, we just consider like within the coalition, they can like exchange their, all their private, uh, private information, and we assume the coalition is bounded. So... Uh, the people in the coalition, they, they won't want to defect. So this is, uh, this is indeed a stronger notion. We consider it like a stronger adversary. Uh, but I, I totally agree that it's uh, interesting future work that under what condition maybe the coalition is not stable. And that, that would be like a weaker and like a maybe meaningful target we want to achieve given all these impossibilities. But I think the consensus literature is headed in this direction, right? That as you change the nature of what information is observable, you change the ability of parties to form mining pools or to be able to observably share rewards. Or, you know, so I think that literature is already pushing it. It might help to think about the collusion side in the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And can we design the information in ways to relax the nature of collusion we need to be resistant against? Anyway, just thoughts. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really interesting, yeah, future direction. Thank you. Any other questions for how? Okay, thank you. <laughs>